My name's Neil Balthaser and I'm your host at Ultra Mobility, the channel all about Class B camper vans. If you're interested in Class B camper vans or are looking to buy, this is the channel for you. If you haven't done so already, I ask you to please consider subscribing. It's super easy. Just click the subscribe button and it'll help me continue to make great videos. Today we're going to review two really great camper vans. I recently reviewed the 2018 Pleasureway Lexor FL and the 2018 Heimer Active 1.0. These are two fantastic vans. They're both built on the ProMaster chassis, but they're wildly different when you actually go through them and compare them side by side. We're going to compare their lounges their bathrooms, their galleys, and finally the bedrooms in each one. But there'll only be one winner. And at the end, and I don't know which one it's going to be. I've got to look at this with you. At the end, I'm going to crown which one I think is the better between these two fantastic camper vans. Well, without further ado, let's take a look at these two camper vans and see how they match up. Now, in this corner is the Lexor FL. Now, remember, the FL stands for Front Lounge. Now the van's strengths are that its build quality is amongst the highest in the industry. In fact, that's what I, I gave the award for, is it's, it's, it's one of the highest quality builds that you can get for your dollar. It's got a front lounge as well as a rear lounge. It uses high-end components like multiplex wiring and color touch screens and lithium ion batteries. It can seat four, it can only sleep two, and the price, as we're seeing it today, the dealer's price is $109,995. Now, in the opposite corner is the 2018 Heimer Active 1.0. Now, the 1.0 is built on the shorter ProMaster chassis, so it comes in at 19 feet 6 inches. It's a foot and a half shorter. They make another one which is virtually the same, the Active 2.0, which is exactly the same length as the Lexor at 20 feet 10 inches, but I reviews, I reviewed the 1.0, which is the shorter one. This van's strengths are it sleeps four and it's got a ton of storage. It comes, the one that we're reviewing today, it comes with 400 amp hours of lithium ion batteries and volt start and ducted heating. And keep in mind, it's all packed into a length that's only 19 feet 6 inches, a foot and a half shorter than the Lexor FL. It seats for and it sleeps for. And the amazing thing is the price of this camper van comes in, as we see it from this dealer, at 89998 So without further ado, ding, 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 let's begin round one by looking at their lounges. Here we are in the inside of the Lexor. Now, the this particular configuration that we're in, a lot of camper vans have with the rear lounge, and there's a reason for that. It's, it's very popular here in North America because the, the lounge is very comfortable. It works really well as a lounge. Uh, it's very open. It's very airy. There are windows all the way around. You have a very comfortable large couch that can seat three across. It's, it can recline electronically. There's two ottomans so you can kick your legs up. There's a nice large flat screen TV there in the back, uh, sensibly located right in front of you. I mean, it just, it really, really works as a lounge. And then in addition, you've got your AC power outlets there as well as four USB charging ports so you can charge your tablets or laptop computers or mobile phones. You also have your consolidated touch screen control panel back there so everything in the van can be controlled right from that color touch screen panel so this is just a really great lounge it's going to be hard to beat this uh, it's a great size and in addition we have that bonus lounge up front in the fl which is where the two cab seats can flip around as you can see we can put a table in the middle up there and we also have a flip out work stand for the driver's side, who also has their own AC power outlet and two USB adapters. And so that's even more incredible for the Lexor because now you have two lounges inside this very short van coming in at 20 feet, 10 inches. So if someone wants to be in the back watching a game or watching the movie, someone can be up front working on their laptop or reading. 
or having a cup of coffee in the front lounge. And so you have two separate living areas in a van this size. So that's just really incredible. Now, there are some minuses to this particular layout and we need to talk about those as well. Because the lounge is located in the back and that's where your two additional shoulder restraint seat belts are, if you look, you're at the very opposite end of the van as where the driver and the cab is at the front. So if you're carrying passengers, they're going to be fairly far away from you. It's gonna make it difficult to have a conversation with them. It's not impossible, but it will be a little more difficult. So that's a minus. Also, unlike the active, you can see there's a table that can be put in the rear lounge here. Uh, uh, you can put the table stand in the floor there and then the tabletop but that has to be stowed away, taken up and down, and it's just not as easy as the active to just fold it away, so that's a minus. And finally, to make room for that front lounge, uh, normally there would be a closet there for the wardrobe, and we've, they've had to take that out, and they've had to move that here into the lounge so you can see where the television is mounted. That's actually a wardrobe closet, and it, you know, it takes up a good part of that ottoman below, so that can't really be used as a seat because of that wardrobe closet, so you can seat four very comfortably back here in the Lexor FL, three across on the bench seat and one on the ottoman on the passenger side. But if they didn't have that wardrobe, you could seat five. So that's a little bit of a ding for them. But overall, very strong, very nice. Probably one of the top selling points about the Lexor is its rear lounge and its front lounge. Now let's take a look at the Actives lounge. Again, if you're on the 360 degree view, I encourage you to just look around on your own. Otherwise, I'll move the camera around for those of us that are on the normal television view. So on the active 1.0 and 2.0, the lounge is at the front of the van and we reserve the back of the van for the bedroom. So the lounge is at the front of the van. Now this has some, some advantages to it, not the least of which is that your passengers now, as you can see, there's two shoulder restraint seat belts as well, as well as headrests are seated up close. They're effectively, it's like a car. So they're very close to the people in the cab. The com normal conversation can be had. Everyone can talk. Uh, they get the benefit of having the air conditioner and the heat from the cab that can heat and cool them uh, just like they do the passengers in the cab. So that's a tremendous plus for the active. It is uh, open and airy as well. You know, it really helps that you have that large sunroof above you. It's a really nice feature, lets a lot of light in, and when you're parked, you can pop that open and it just creates great circulation. You get the benefit of all the glass from the cab, from the windshield and everything. It's not as open and airy though uh, as the Lexor. It's a well-designed front lounge. One of the things I really like about it is that table is integrated into the side of the van. So, you don't have to figure out where to stow the table. If you want to just pop the table down, it's super easy to do. You just pop it down, you bring it up, you lift it up. You want to extend it, you just pull it out and you extend it. So really ingenious, great design for the table. And I love not having to think about where to put it. There are some minuses here. Uh, the biggest one of which is there is really only seating for three in this lounge. You get uh, the cab driver seat can spin around and then you've got the jump seat in the back and the jump seat in the back can sit two people, an adult and a child. It'll be a little tight for two adults, but I'd say in general, three people. The passenger's chair does spin around, but if you notice, even when you extend the table out, you're kind of sitting at the corner of the table. And so, yeah, it's a part of the lounge, but you're not really getting the benefit of the table for eating and things like that. You can, I'm not saying you can't, it's just, it's not as well designed as say on the Lexor. Uh, another thing is it's a very awkward position for the TV. Now, it's interesting, in the European models, they don't really have TVs uh, in their camper van, so there's no TV there at all in the European model, but in the North American market, Heimer put the television right behind the, the jump seat, and uh, I think it works well for a couple who are sitting up in the cab if they want to spin around and work and, and watch TV, but in my case, like I have a daughter and we use the flat screen TV in the back of our van all the time when we're on long road trips so she can watch movies. And that would be difficult. Well, that'll be impossible here because the kids you know, aren't owls and they're not going to turn their heads around 180 degrees to watch TV. They'll be watching it on their own iPads and things like that, which works fine, I guess. The other thing I do want to point out is look on the ceiling. There's only one itty bitty little LED 
There's strip lighting underneath the cabinet, but there's one spotlight LED up there. In fact, there's only four in the van total. So in general, even though this van's parked outside, as you can see, it's fairly dark and all the windows are open. It's fairly dark. Uh, the bed is folded up in the back, so it is blocking one of the windows back there. But compared to the Lexor, uh, it's it's not well lit. So, so that concludes our comparison between the lounges. I think it's pretty clear that the Lexor wins in the lounge area. It's got not only just the better main lounge in the back that's more comfortable and, and suited for lounging because it's got an electronic sofa that reclines in ottomans and uh, t television placed in the right place uh, and is larger and airier. But it's also got the front lounge then, so it's got two living areas. So I think hands down, as far as the lounge is concerned, the Luxor wins this round. Okay, moving into round two, we're going to compare the galleys, starting with the Luxor's galley. So we are here inside of the Luxor. First thing I think you'll notice is it's a rather small galley uh, compared to the size of the van. The, the van is a foot and a half longer, yet the galley feels uh, the same size, maybe even a little bit smaller than the galley that's on the active. Um, Part of that is because we have the microwave stuck in there and uh, that's going to take up a lot of space that would normally be used for storage and things like that. But on the positive side, it has premium finishes. I think you can see definitely the beautiful luster of the Corian countertop and just the beautiful you know, solid maple cabinetry and things like that. I did ding the microwave's placement, but it is a convection microwave and it's larger than on the active. So that means in addition to microwaving, you can brown and, and bake in it, and it's a convection oven. You have a larger refrigerator, as you can see there. It's a five cubic foot refrigerator. Now, it's a three-way. It could be a plus or it could be a minus. It depends on how you use your camper van. If you're going to be boondocking a lot, then I, I like a three-way refrigerator. Uh, I did a video on this for why I like a three-way refrigerator if you're going to be boondocking a lot. Mainly, at the end of the day, it's because it offloads power needs from the battery which just leaves you to have more power in your batteries to do other things and to do them for longer so that is a three-way refrigerator and really importantly if you look down you can see we have a pretty good aisle walkway space this is something you need to look at in these camper vans the aisle amount of aisle space i, I call it the galley shuffle if, if a person who's working in the galley has to move completely out of the galley to let another person pass through Generally, in these camper vans, the bathroom and kitchen is going to be midsection in the van, so that makes it a kind of a choking point on the van to get between the front and the back of the van. And uh, so it, if you have a wider aisle, it just means that someone can be coming out of the bathroom or someone can be in the galley and another person can pass by and pass through. And there's enough space here for that to happen, so that's definitely a plus. Now, a couple of minuses I already touched on some of these storage, uh, not a lot of storage for the galley, and um, the microwave is also down low. I'm not a big fan of that because you're getting hot things in there and you have to bend down to, to yeah, just, I like microwaves that are either at eye level or just slightly below eye level at chest level. That's just my preference. But overall, you know, it's a good galley. Let's take a look now at the Actives galley. So, the first thing you'll notice about the active galley is there's a lot of storage. You know, you've got the all the bank of drawers underneath the sink. They've given you even a cabinet above the sink. And then if you turn around, you've got a little pantry and things back behind you and a, another louvered door uh, there as well for additional storage. So even though the van is a foot and a half shorter <laughs> than the Lexor, you're going to get more storage in the kitchen. The finishes aren't as premium and, premium and high end as the Lexor, but you do get that compressor refrigerator and your microwave is not down really low. I prefer the microwave at the height that they have it here in the active. Now there are some misses and I'm going to start with the biggest one which is look straight down and you'll see the aisleway is really narrow and so you're going to be doing the galley shuffle as I call it in the active meaning that if someone's in the kitchen working and someone needs to pass through, they're going to have to exit all the way out either into the bedroom or into the front lounge to let the person pass through. That may not be a problem, but you need to think about this stuff because if you're in the RV, living in the RV with another person, that could get old pretty quickly. 
All right, also the microwave is rather small compared to the Lexor and it's not a convection, so it's strictly a microwave. You can't bake in it and you can't brown in it. And the refrigerator is smaller, which may or may not be a problem, but it is smaller and it's located down low. So while the refrigerator on the Lexor was up high and the microwave down low, they've inverted it here and they put the refrigerator down low and it's got the microwave up higher. I guess I would prefer the microwave up higher for me just because you've got hot items. If I drop something out of the refrigerator that's hot, or drop something out of the refrigerator that's cold, uh, it's not going to be as big of a problem as if I drop something out of the microwave that's really hot. So, well, what do you guys think about the winner in the galley? Um, you know, I think the Active has a lot of strength going for it in the sense it's got a lot more storage and, you know, it feels just a little bit bigger. But that bottleneck with the narrow aisle in the middle of the van, I think it's going to get old for a lot of people. And for that reason alone, I'm going to award the Lexor as the winner for the galley round. Okay, well, it's two to zero. Lexor is up against the Active. Lexor has won both rounds for the galley and for the lounge. Now let's move on to the bathroom. Looking here at the Lexor, a lot of pluses here. Uh, first of which is it just has a nice residential feel to it. You know, it's premium finishes with the Corium countertop and stainless steel sink. Lots of light. That window doesn't open, but it is there and it adds a lot of openness, I think, to the bathroom. So it, this bathroom, you know, I said in the review is one of the strengths of the Lexor. Uh, there are some minuses, not the least of which is if you look straight down, that little space there where we're standing between the sink and the toilet, that is basically the space that you have to shower. Now, it doesn't seem like it, but if you are going to try to stand, you know, you're not going to be over the sink and the toilet doesn't swiffle like in the active. So even though it feels like a large bathroom, it's a little bit constrained there. So that's about the only minus that I have on, on the Lexor's bathroom. Let's take a look at the active. Now, I'm going to I'm going to tell you I'm, and I'm surprised. I actually really like the active's bathroom. It's very nice looking. I think it's very modern look. It's very European looking. It has nice finishes to it. Uh, and they've done some things in it that are that are very smart, uh, even though it's quite small because they've got two mirrors, one against the wall and then one facing you above the sink. And then combining that with the fantastic vent fan, the dedicated fantastic vent fan above you, which also acts as a skylight, bringing lots of light in. This bathroom actually feels pretty open and airy, even though it's surprisingly small. It's got a good amount of storage as well, considering how small the bathroom is. You've got a medicine cabinet, and off the left of the medicine cabinet, you've got a little bit more storage. So that's nice. And I think importantly, that toilet is a cassette toilet. And because of that, it's not porcelain, it swivels. So you can turn it 90 degrees and look at that. When you do it, you actually have more standing room in the Actives bathroom than you do in the Lexor. So that plus the fold up sink help give you a lot more space and feeling of openness in this bathroom. Now, the biggest problem with the Actives bathroom is that it has a five gallon cassette toilet. Setting aside the fact that some of you don't like cassette toilets, the five gallon is going to limit you in terms of if you're a boondocker. You can have as much, as large, if you want a fresh water tanks and gray water tanks and lots of solar and battery power and all that, but if you fill up your black water tank and you can't safely and legally dump it anywhere, because you're not supposed to dump it unless you take it to some facility which goes into a sewer treatment plant, then that five gallons is not going to last you very long, especially if there's two of you who are using the van. It's just not. So that's a uh, big problem. The other thing I really wish they would have done is in the European model of the active, there is a window behind the sink. So when you lower the sink, there's a little window there. And I just think it adds so much. And it's really nice that when you lower the sink to wash your hands, you just have a little view outside. And then when you put the sink up, it's great because it acts as a window cover and you can use the bathroom and have privacy. So I really wish that they, they would have put uh, a sink in there. So what's the uh, my final call here? Well, I, I thought this was going to be a hands down uh, easy one because I do love the Lexor's bathroom so much. But the Active has such a great bathroom and they've done such a great job with it. It's smartly designed. It has a modern, fresh feel to it. And if it weren't for that small five gallon tank in the cassette toilet, I would have awarded this round to the Active. But because of that uh, small capacity on the cassette toilet, 
I think I'm going to have to award this round to the Lexor. So, summing up three rounds out of four, and the Lexor has won all three rounds. There's only one more round left, and that is the bedroom. So let's move into the bedroom, and let's see if the active can pull something out. All right, here we are inside the Lexor's bedroom. Now remember, the lounge doubles up as the bedroom. So what you do to turn this into your bed is on the color touch panel, multiplex color screens, you just hit a, a button and you lower the bed down electronically. So that will lower the bed down, the back of the bed will go flat. And when that happens, you immediately have a setup of two twin beds. So on the driver's side and on the passenger side, you have two separate beds. One of the strengths of the Lexor is its versatility and sleeping arrangement. So you can have one large queen bed in the back, but if you take out that center section, you can have two twins. And the advantage of that is it's very easy to get out of bed without disturbing the other person. If let's say you have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, you've got that center section you can swing your legs out into and then just stand up and walk to the bathroom. That's really convenient. Also, the bed sits lower to the ground, so it's much easier for you to get in and out of the bed, unlike the active where you have to kind of climb up into the bed. And if it's just one of you, you don't even, you can just sleep laterally here. It's wide enough on the Lexor that you can just lower that sofa bed down and then sleep laterally from uh, side to side. And that makes it even better because then you can use the ottomans as a nightstand. So lots of different sleeping configurations in the Lexor. As we look at the active, the active's bedroom is also in the back, but it the bedroom acts as a bedroom slash garage. So the pluses to the active are that it's a very comfortable platform bed with a thick memory foam mattress, as you can see here. So you're not sleeping on a sofa, converted sofa, which has some seams between where the back transitions to the seat and then the sofa transitions to the ottomans. It's just basically one big piece of mattresses that all fit in there and you've got the wood slat system. It's much more like a, a residential bed. So that's a very much a plus for the active. But where the active really shines and I think blows away the Lexor is that second bedroom up front uh, in, where the lounge can convert into a bedroom. You can see the dimensions there for the second bed and that can sleep two kids or it can sleep one adult. That's amazing in a van that is 19 feet six inches. It's a foot and a half shorter than the Lexor and yet it can sleep four people. The other bonus, as if the Lexor weren't blown out of the water yet, the other bonus is that the rear bedroom, you can just easily fold up that sl slatted part and now you've got an enormous garage in the back. So lots of storage under the bed as well as above Plus, when you fold that bed up, you can get all types of gear and stuff back there in the back. And there's a pass through all the way from the rear doors all the way up to the front of the cab. So you've got really long items like a surfboard or things like that. You can pass it through there and, uh, and have it on the inside of the van. So that's a real plus. Now, the only minuses I see with the Active's bedroom setup is, unlike the Lexer, you are going to need to kind of climb up a little bit into the bed because it is higher. And really, there's really only one sleeping configuration. It's one large bed up there. There's no configuration where you can leave the aisle open and you have two twin beds. So those are the only two minuses I can see. So I'm going to have to award the bedroom to the active because of that second berth up front that really lets you use this as a four-person berth camper van, which is incredible. Plus having a good sized garage when the bed is folded up. And, but if it weren't for that second berth and garage, the Lexor would win this battle, mainly because the main bed is, is more versatile in terms of sleep free arrangements. But I gotta tell you that second berth opens up the active to family camping. And that for me is a big deal. Well, that wraps it up for our head to head competition between the Pleasure Lexor FL and the Heimer Active 1.0. You know, at first blush, it just seems like the Lexor trounced the active. It won three of the four rounds in terms of a better lounge, a better galley, a better bathroom. It did lose out to the active on the bedroom. But you know what? That's not the whole story. The active also comes with the ability to sleep 
four people, which means that the Active is a family camper van. Sure, a couple can also use it just like the Lexor, but a family can't use the Lexor. A family can only use the Active in this head-to-head -head competition. Because of that, and because of the large garage in the back, which allows you to use it for hauling more, and also combined with the fact that it is $20,000 less, at least according to the pricing that we saw from the dealers, $20,000 less than the Lexor, and it comes with a six-year warranty, hands down, the Active wins this competition with the Lexor FL. I know it's stunning, and I love Pleasure Way, and I couldn't believe it myself, but when I actually did the comparison, I had to be honest with myself, and I have to say, the Active's the winner here. So congratulations, Erwinheimer, on a fantastic product. I think you really hit the sweet spot in terms of utility, the number of people you can carry, the number of people you can sleep in it, using it as a hauler, and then pricing it just right, and giving me peace of mind with a six-year bumper-to-bumper all-inclusive warranty. It just is the cherry on the top. So the Heimer Active 1.0 wins this competition against the Pleasureway Lexor FL. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I'd love if you became a subscriber. It helps me continue to make great videos. Leave a comment in the comment section below, and I try to answer each and every one of them. We'll see you again next time on Ultra Mobility, your channel for Class B camper vans. Take care. Bye-bye.